Hey everyone, my name is Michael and today I want to dive into pagination when used in a layered architecture. So not the layer where you just return a query bill, like a proper layer where you have the paging algorithms basically run in your business layer. Before I dive in, we are running online workshops. And if you want to learn all about GraphQL, all about the new features in Hot Chocolate 14, how to do GraphQL with patterns like CQRS or DDD, you can check out our next workshops on learn.chilicream.com. And with that, let's dive in. Okay, I have prepared here a simple demo project that is a product catalog. Think webshop, and this is just the part where we manage the products. We already have here a couple of GraphQL related types, and we also have here a service layer. So I can, for instance, go in the product service layer here, and you can see I have two methods on there. One is getting the product by ID, and the other one is getting all the products. On the query side, I have two resolvers that basically just pass these business layer methods through. Let's maybe start it, and then we go to Banana Cake Pop, open a new tab, and then we can dive into, let me refresh here. We can dive into the products and then get the name, for instance, from a product. So at the moment, that is basically everything. So you can see here 309 lines of JSON. So how do we get that pageable without exposing a query bill from our service layer? And as of now, we are really just doing a to list here. We are having an order set here ordered by the name, and we are returning here a list. So what we introduced with Hot Chocolate 14 are some primitives that you can use in your business layer. So this new package here, Hot Chocolate Pagination Core, brings a lot of primitives around paging. There are no dependencies on the GraphQL core, and there's only paging related types that you can use in your business layer. Apart from the primitives, we also have helpers now for entity framework that allow for proper cursor-based pagination in your infrastructure layer or wherever you want to run that. So let's dive in and see how we can make that work. So I'm here back in my project and the first thing we got to change here is really the return type because this at the moment is a list. And even if we had that for a paged result, it wouldn't be enough for the GraphQL layer as we need to know if there's a next page and what the cursor is to the next page. So what I can do here is introduce one of our new primitives and that is this page type. And this page type just exposed the collection of items from this page and the next and the previous cursor, plus if there is a next or a previous page. The second thing I need here in my business layer is really the paging arguments. And also these paging arguments are not the cursor paging argument that you find in Hot Chocolate. They're abstracted so you can use them in your business layer. So with these two things, we can start uh, building out our method here and put some paging logic in. There's one more package and we have one package for each database provider we support in Hot Chocolate. In this case, we are using Entity Framework here. So we are using the Entity Framework helper package that is also coming with Hot Chocolate 14. Let me show you that. So if we go back to NuGet, we can look for Hot Chocolate Data Entity Framework dot helpers. And again, this package has nothing with Hot Chocolate or GraphQL stuff in it. We just have here reference to the paging core, to the primitives, and also to entity framework. So you really can use, for instance, in your domain layer or application layer, you can use the primitives, whereas in your infrastructure layer, you can really use now this helpers package, which just implements the algorithms for cursor-based pagination. So let's go back to our application and then let's implement that. So the way this works now is that we have here our context with the products. And at the moment, we just have here an order by name. So if you already know how keyset pagination works, then you know that keyset pagination needs a stable order. And it also needs as a last order, a stable key. So in this case, the name might be sufficient, but it could also be that you could have the same name twice. And in this case, we need to make sure that we also do a then by for the product ID. Okay, so this looks good. We have here the correct order. And to make that really pageable, we just use a new extension that we have for Entity Framework, 
which is called to page async. And into that, we can pass the paging arcs. And then you're basically done. So this is our paginated call here. We can actually remove the expression body again. And then this guy looks pretty neat. But as I said, these packages have no connection to hot chocolate. And hot chocolate actually doesn't have a connection to these packages. So we need to register them with hot chocolate. So we go here to the program CS. And the first thing we need to register is really the paging arguments. So I'm doing an add paging arguments here on my GraphQL builder. And these paging arguments registration, which basically connects hot chocolate with these new paging libraries, is the following package. So this was a helper. And then we have the entity framework package, this guy here. And this references hot chocolate data and hot chocolate entity framework. So you really are now able to layer these things right. So let's go back to our project here. And there's one more thing, because if we build that, it won't, it won't work. You can already see in the watch build here, it's broken. And that's because of the product queries down here. And the product queries here have at the moment a list. So this is wrong because a paginated type in hot chocolate is called a connection, right? That is a primitive in hot chocolate, which we use for paging. On top of that, we still need to use our paging middleware, which knows what to do with connection here. And then we still have some issues here. So this actually demands the paging arguments. We registered them just centrally, and that means we can now use them here in our resolver. So I can say paging arguments, let's call them paging arcs, and then we can pass that on. And you can see that the return type here doesn't match, page to connection doesn't match. And for that, we have also an extension method in this entity frameworks core package, and that is called to connection async. We just chain that in, and then we are good to go. So let's go to banana cake pop, let's refresh our schema, and you can see this is now wrong. And if we go here into the column view and then go into the products, you can see that we have now here all the paging arguments and we are returning a products connection now. So we can now go for nodes here and get the name. And actually, let me just do one thing. Let's open up the terminal here to see what's happening SQL wise. So I'm running this and now you can see that we down here have the select statement and we have a simple limit here. So let's page forward a bit. So we're gonna take the paging info here. Then we go for the end cursor and you can already see this end cursor has a lot more to it. Let's actually have a look what's in it. I paste that here into base64 decode and then you can see that we have encoded here the name and the ID. And that is what we had in the order, right? These are the parts that we had in the order. With this, we can find the next item. Okay, let's go back. And then we take this cursor and we just say, we wanna to go to the next one. So we want the first two after this cursor. And then we rerun that, go back to our SQL output here. And there you can see that now the order is encoded into the where clause and we have still here the limit. And this makes it so fast because we don't have to skip over data like with skip take. We actually having here in the where clause encoded from which entry in our set we wanna read. So it's much faster than what you can do with the typical offset pagination. Okay, let me show you one more nice thing about paging now with Hot Chocolate 14, and that is batched paging with data loader. So what is always a problem is actually this kind of paging. So we have here brands and these brands, this is already paged. Let's get the name. This works. You can see I have a lot of these guys and let's take actually two. So I have two and then we go into products and products should also be a paged list here. At the moment it is not. So I could just get all the products for this brand but I wanna have a nested paging here. So let's do that. So we are going back into our product service here and we're gonna introduce here a little method. And this method will return again a task, a page, and then a product. And we call that get products 
by brand. And then we're gonna pass in here the brand ID from what we page on, the paging arguments and a cancellation token. Awesome. So if we design this naively, we could just take over what we have here, right? Could just take this and then we just add a where clause where t.brand ID is equal to brand ID, right? Let's take that for now. And let's go to the brand node here. And here we're gonna introduce actually our paginated field. So we're gonna introduce here a static new resolver, which is async and returns a task of connection. So this is the same thing we did before, also with product here in this case, call that get products async. Then we pass in the paging arguments here, the cancellation token. And one thing we also have to have is really here the brand. So we say parent and then we're gonna add the brand. Okay, that looks good. So one more thing and that is our service. So we take the product service and from the product service, we get the product by brand. Actually the brand ID here, the cancellation token. And again, we don't know what page is. So we're gonna take the helper method to connection async and then an await is missing here. And last thing is to put a use paging on the top. Okay, that looks good. And we are ready to rerun it. So we go back in here, refresh the schema, and you can see now we can page. We can actually run this thing. And you can see this is paged. We could also ask here for the first two and that works nicely. From the SQL side, it's not so nice. You can see here, that's the first entry, second entry, so we have tons of SQL now. Let's optimize that. We go back to our product service layer here. And what we are actually doing here, I didn't explain that so far, is using data loaders in the service layer. We also did a lot of work here so that it's completely detached from hot chocolate and you can really use data loader as a data fetching API behind your service layer. And that brings a lot of benefits. I'm not going into that, but just as an explanation here. So what we're gonna do here is now use the product data loader here and introduce a new data loader to it. So this one will batch fetch these paging nodes. So we're using batching to get all the paged products in one go. So this is a static async. We're gonna return here a dictionary and here come again the primitives in play. So we have a primitive for the key. That's the page key. And in our case, it's the page key of an int because a brand ID has an int as its key. Let's import that. And the result of our data loader is the page. So we get per key one page and it's a page of products. So I'm calling that get products by brand ID async. And then we're gonna specify here the key. So this is a batching method. So we get a read only list here. And this is a read only list of this key here. So let's pass that in. And we say these are the keys. We need a catalog context, so a DB context in here. And then we need a cancellation token. So this is a bit more complex than the standard data loader that we have here. And I'm gonna explain why. And we probably, until the end of the release, we might even generate all the complexity around that. Uh, and you don't have to deal with it anymore, but I'm showing you really the bits and pieces that go into it at this point. Okay, so the first thing is the output. Let's just have here a dictionary, and that is our result. And this can be nullable because we want to save some memory. So what can happen is, and that is the case for what we not optimize, is that you have two fields here, like this, A and B, and B has different paging arguments. And there could be even other scenarios where you have deeper in the graph, again, the same paging construct with different paging arguments. And what we optimize for with the paging key is that we say these paging arguments actually are part of the key and together they make up a unique key. If you fetch for the brand's ID, with different paging arguments, we are actually doing two SQLs then. But if you're just going for this single query here, then we will have just two queries, one for brands and then one for the products. Okay, so this is why we have this result here. So the next thing for this is that we have a for each and this for each is actually over a grouped part of this key. So we 
are grouping this key and we are grouping by the paging arguments. So we now have per unique set of paging args, a group. And this group, we're gonna use and fetch for each group from the database. So let's get the grouped keys here and that are our brand IDs. We get that from our key. With the brand IDs that we have for this data fetch, we're gonna go and really do the database fetch. So we're gonna get a group result and we use here our context. So we're gonna await brands and this is something different. So we start on from brands because we wanna have for each brands a paged set of products. So what we're gonna do is we take the brands and we use again as no tracking because we are just doing fast reads here. So the next thing is we're gonna limit it to the brand IDs. So we are only getting the brands that were selected in this set of keys for this group. Next, we're gonna include the product. So for the products, if you remember right, let's go to the product service here. And in the product service, when we use paging, we have this order. And this order we also need here. So we're gonna paste this in. That's the same order that we wanna use here for our paging. And from this, we also gonna build the cursor, right? So we need these here. Last but not least, we do a batch to fetch all the pages. And you can see here, we have this two batch async. And that's what we're gonna take. And that's gonna rewrite this query. It will actually not fetch the full brands. It just takes from brands what is needed to build up the key. And what is needed, we're gonna describe here. So we're gonna say, this is our key for brand. And then we're gonna pass in the paging arcs. And the paging arcs are actually here, the key, dot key, that are our paging arcs. And last, we're gonna pass in the cancellation token. So with this, we have the first group fetched. And what we optimize is actually that we just have one group there because in most cases, we just have one set of paging arcs. So we're gonna say, if the result is null, then we're gonna set the result to the group result. Let me set that to null here. And in any other case, so if result is not null, we're gonna iterate over our group result. And then we're gonna merge that with the actual result that we already have. So we're gonna do a try add here, and then we are good. So at the end, there's a small problem because we could return that and then it, we get these squiggles down here. So there is a guarantee from Hot Chocolate that we will never invoke this data loader here if we don't have at least one key. So you know that you at least get one item here. So you can either choose to do the bang operator here or you choose to not trust us and then you could do just create a new dictionary, which will never be created, so don't worry, but either of those things work. So this is in, the last thing we need is to put this attribute on the top and then our data loader should already be generated. So we can go to our product service here and then we can inject our data loader, which is the product by brand ID data loader. And then we can use that down here and say load async. And then we're gonna create here a new page key, which is an int. And then we pass in the brand ID in here and the paging arcs. Last but not least, we pass in the cancellation token. Okay, we down here have some squiggles and actually this guy here is the wrong data loader. So what we are gonna need here is the product by brand ID data loader and it's actually the products by brand ID data loader. So I messed that up. So it's the products by brand ID data loader and that should be called products by brand ID. Let me use that down here and now this works and the beauty of that is I fixed that in the service layer or repository layer or whatever you call that. And uh, I didn't affect the GraphQL layer. So if I go to my GraphQL layer here, look in the brand node, then you can see I'm just calling the product service here and I don't need to know that these complexities are behind that. So I can now just rerun that. You can see the server is already up. So we just go back here, we do this call, go back in here, and there you can see now that we have here the first call to get the brands, and then the second call to fetch the products nested, paged through this connection. So before you head out, please help our project by giving us a star on GitHub. Giving a star to an open source project is the easiest way to contribute to that project. So please help us along and stars. And with this, I'm out.